Hello everybody and welcome back to another Terraria modding video tutorial. Today we're going to learn about dust and how we can apply them to our projectiles and do some cool stuff with them that you might not know about. So dust is something that can really take your mod or your projectile or effect to the next level. So knowing how to manipulate dust is quite a useful modding skill. So let's just go ahead and open up our mod real quick. I'm going to just go into my develop mods and open my sources. Okay, awesome. And I'm actually going to hop over into wizard mod for this. So let's open up the .csproj file. And I think I saw a question the other day that was uh, about someone who could not open their .csproj file. So if you can't open your solution file or .csproj file, which is your actual project file that contains all of this stuff, all your folders and things very neatly organized, as well as your base mod and pretty much everything inside of your mod folder, uh, you might want to take a look into re-downloading Visual Studio or reconfiguring Visual Studio because that usually indicates that you have not uh, correctly installed the right components for desktop development, C-sharp development, or game development, or .NET development. I don't know what it is now, but there's a bunch of different things you need to make sure you have downloaded, a bunch of different requirements, but uh, I would definitely check that if you're having any issues. Okay, let's go ahead and open one of our projectiles here. So one of the... So what's a projectile that has just a ton of dust? Let's take a look at the Ashen projectile. So the Ashen projectile, for those of you who don't know, that one is a projectile that is shot by the Ashen staff. So let's actually go into some random world here. And I probably have it. It's one of my favorite items. Uh, there it is, Deep Slate Staff. So it's quite dark, but uh, if we shoot it, you'll notice there's quite a bit of dust. And you can see it's got some pretty cool effects on it as well. Um, when it explodes, there's like a little dust explosion of fire. And you can see there's like a, a physics-based particle trail there. Uh, it's not as good, I think, as it was previously. There was some reworking done to it um, before 1.4, but it still is pretty cool how uh, it, it interacts with the physics of the actual object. So let's take a look at how I did that. Now, a little bit of a warning here. The code that I did for this is not very pretty, um, considering it was made a little over a year ago, but you know what? That's okay. Uh, when I went back and was like refactoring stuff for 1.4, I tried my best to not even touch it because I knew it was just going to give me a headache. But here we are, and this is the projectile. You can even see it's not, not all of the 1.4 porting stuff has been completed. I still have some stuff to remove, like that right there. I had duplicate usings. But um, let's take a look at our public override void AI, because this is where we actually create our particles here. So we're going to be taking mainly a look at this right here. This is where I create my dust. Now you might be wondering, wait, that's only like two lines of code. That doesn't seem that bad. And you'd be right. It's actually not that bad. But there's something about objects that I tend to realize people don't really get a good understanding of. And that is that an object is simply an instance of a class. And when you actually think and go into what a class is or an instance of a class is, it's just an object. A class is an object. It has variables. It has properties. And you can change those properties. For example, in our projectile video, we found out that all of the projectiles in Terraria are just in this array of projectiles. There's like a maximum number. I think the number was uh, 255 projectiles can be alive at once. It's a maximum size and there's a limit. It's just an array of projectile objects. And the same goes for dust. So let's take a look at the actual code. I'll zoom in even more. So right here we have ourselves int dust five. I call it dust five because of my own probably bad naming conventions, but this is just an integer, right? And dust.newdust right here returns an integer. You can even see right here on the function, it says int. That means it returns a type integer. And what that means is we can now store the ID of this dust or the object of this dust into an integer. And that integer that this thing returns is the ID of the dust. Right here, I'm creating my dust in my projectile's position and I'm giving it, let's see the parameters. There's a width and a height of the dust and the width and height I'm providing it with are the projectile's width and height. And then for the fourth parameter, which is the type of dust, I give it six. And I know six very well because it is the particle ID or dust ID for fire. And this is one I use quite frequently. But uh, I think now you can probably change it to dust ID dot fire. Uh, that's probably a more readable way of doing it. So I'd recommend doing that. And if we actually hover over this again, you'll notice there's a few new optional parameters that uh, might have always been there. I'm not sure. But you can change the velocity, the velocity is X, Y, um, as well as the alpha. And I'll, you can also give it a color too. So you can take an existing dust and create a new color, which is just a uh, red, green, blue, and an alpha there or an RGBA. And then you have the scale of the dust. So it looks like you can now initialize all of this in just one call with optional parameters, which I'm not going to lie, that would have been really nice to have. Um, but 
Nonetheless, once we store the dust in an integer, say you want to modify the scale over time, so maybe you want to give it an initial scale, but what if you want it to change, like maybe fade out, or increase in size, or maybe increase in speed or velocity? Well, remember how I was talking about we can store this in an integer? This is now the ID of that dust, which means we can now access that instance of that new dust object that we've just created. So beneath this, we'll say main right here. It's a class, a, a main class that pretty much everything inherits from in some way, dot dust, dust five, dot velocity. So what are we doing here? Well, we're accessing the main dust class and which instance of that class are we accessing? Dust five. What member of that struct or class are we accessing? The velocity. So by essentially doing this, all we're saying is let's just break it down into a bunch of pieces. We're accessing this dust velocity and we're changing this and we're setting equal to our projectile's velocity. And what that means is that it's now going to travel at the same velocity and in the same direction as our projectile. So if we go back into our Terraria, we do this, you'll see that's how it kind of follows the uh, actual arc of the projectile. But maybe now that gives you some perspective into how versatile dust actually is. And say you wanted to do something else. Right? Say you wanted to maybe change like another property of the dust. Well, dust has a bunch of properties. And if we press a dot in Visual Studio, well, this is why you want to get Visual Studio, by the way, and you don't want to use VS Code, is because you can see all of the struct members right here. Look at this. You could even take away the gravity. Say you didn't want this thing to have any gravity. I could just say, no gravity equals true. And all of a sudden, this dust would not be affected by gravity. And that's all you have to do. And you can see how actually easy it is to really make a nice dust particle effect. And say you wanted to get maybe some kind of like explosion. Well, let's go down over to our kill. This is probably the worst way to do an explosion effect, but let's just isolate one of these right here. I'll just do this real quick. Let's take a look at this code. This is the explosion effect right here. I have three different explosion effects, um, which it would have been better to combine these into one for loop but uh, I have these all separated. Don't question my bad code from a long time ago, please. Anyways, for int num 369, and I know what you're saying, what in the world are these variable names? You talk about this so much, making good variable names, why are these so bad? I've noticed tmod porter does some very strange uh, changes to your code when you're porting things over, and one of them was changing the variable names to this. I have no idea why it did that, but it did. Um, and so I just, kind of left it there i didn't really have the time to uh, go back and change every single instance of where i was like changing my dust uh, so i just didn't bother too much with the variable names um, but in this explosion right here you can see we're creating a dust we're essentially doing the same exact thing as we were before but let's zoom out real quick it's a bit longer you can see we're giving it uh, our own kind of parameters and now the reason why i have default color here is because i don't actually want to change the color but i do want to give it a initial scale uh, so that's why I have that there. But I'm basically just creating it at the positions X and Y, giving it the width and height of the projectile, and then giving it, uh, you know, this is the type. I think this is the type for a different fire particle effect. I don't fully remember which one this uh, 87 is, but it is like a different fire particle effect, just to add some variety in there. And then we have the speed right here. And I think I changed it. Yeah, I changed it right here. So I set that to zero. And then I have the uh, alpha which is at 100 so it's like slightly transparent like kind of half opaque and then i give it the default color and then a scale of 1.5 f so it's a little bit larger than the other particles by about 50 percent and then i change the velocity of this to the projectile's velocity now this is pretty dumb looking back on this because what you could actually do is you could literally just there's a velocity parameter now in the new dust right you can see if we hover over it there's a speed x and speed y so I would actually be setting instead of 0f right here, where my mass is hovering over, I would just put projectile velocity.x and then velocity.y. But uh, you know what, whatever, it doesn't really matter. If you want to change it over time, it's, you do have to actually do this. So it is maybe more readable this way as well. And then below this, we set our no gravity equal to true. So it doesn't actually fall to the ground. And that explosion effect, this first one here, if we go back over into our game, see that little, uh, those larger fire particles whenever this thing gets uh, hits the ground right here? It's like kind of like the bright white particles. That's what that explosion effect is doing. And these other ones are just kind of like supplemental, but I could have easily just combined them uh, into one. But I think I wanted to be very specific with the amount of particles I wanted, so I did them separately. But uh, ideally, you would want to put this probably all in one for loop. You don't want to be looping three separate times. That's just a little bit unnecessary. But before we end, let's go take a look at some of the other things we can do with dust. 
So let's let's take a look at the class again. Uh, let's say, or actually, we don't need to write a new line. Let's just put a dot here. We can see what we got. So we have active, velocity, alpha, and fade in. So these are probably starred because they're the most commonly used. Active is whether or not this dust is actually active. If it's not active, then it will be destroyed. So if you want to destroy dust, you simply just set the active flag equal to false. Um, and if you want to change the velocity, change the velocity. Velocity is vector two. And if you want to change the alpha, you can just change the alpha. And you want to make something opaque, well, you probably should just minus the alpha of it. 255 is usually um, fully you know, visible and completely solid, whilst zero is fully opaque. So then we have our fade in. And what this flag does is whenever dust is created, it'll start at a zero alpha and it'll fade into one. And this can be kind of nice if you want to have like a smooth fade in effect. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of particles in the game that do that. And it's possible that this also makes it fade out. I haven't really tested this too much. So then we got ourselves with the color. So you can change the color dynamically. So say you wanted to have like a rainbow effect, totally possible. You could change the color to your own color variable that you can change over time. And maybe you want a custom data. I don't know what that does. There's a dust index. Uh, maybe that changes the type of dust that it is. So maybe it's possible to change the actual um, dust. Or no, dust index looks like it's the position within the array of dust. That's probably what that is. So maybe that means you can prioritize certain dust if you have like a lot of particles. You can prioritize certain particles maybe to always be uh, shown first. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then there's fade in and first frame. Don't know what that does. Then there's frame. Maybe you want to have an animation for your dust. Maybe you have like a custom uh, sprite sheet for dust. Uh, that's an entirely different video. And then we have our get alpha. These are just kind of getters. So if you want to get the alpha of any dust, just call the get alpha. Same with the color type, uh, whatever. So maybe you want to actually have like really cool, let's say, damage effects for particles. Like you want to say, oh, this particle can deal damage. Well, you can get the type of that particle and be like, okay, if this particle is this type, then we can just check if the position of that dust is, you know, close to an enemy. And if it is, then we'll damage that enemy and we'll destroy that dust or set the active flag to false. So there's a whole bunch of cool stuff you can actually do with dust um, if you just kind of get creative with it and take a look at all the different things you can do. And then there's no gravity, no light. So this will obviously stop dust from emitting light if you set that um, equal to true. And then there's position, like I was talking about earlier, the position within the game world. Uh, the rotation, so maybe you want to have a rotation effect, you can like increase that by one uh, every frame, like main.dust rotation plus equals one. That would kind of give it like a spinning effect in a circle. The scale. So this one is very, very commonly used to make a really nice looking dust particle effects. You can have things fade in and out with a scale. Uh, you can apply a shader to dust. Now, this is something that is a little bit out of the scope of what I'm, I'm kind of comfortable with teaching. Shaders are not in C Sharp. They're in GLSL, I think, for Terraria. You have to create a vertex shader, and it's probably best to test these um, outside of Terraria before you actually use them to make sure that they actually work and have the desired effect. If you're having trouble with dust, don't really worry about shaders too much. Okay, and then we have the type, which is just the actual type of the dust. So like the ID that we pass in basically, and then the velocity. So awesome, we now know everything that we need to know about dust. That is essentially how you can create dust. And I use dust a lot in Sorcery Overhaul. I can probably pick up like any item in here and it probably uses dust, like, or staff. Sure, why not? Let's try this one. What does this one do? Yep, there you go. Has an orbiting effect around the player and shoots lightning. This is all dust. This is not even, no sprite work, nothing. It's just dust particle effects. So you can really get a lot done with only dust if you really want to. Let's find something else actually too. Um, what's another good one? The Weeper. That one's actually a very, very cool effect. And we'll look at the staffs as well because the staffs also have very nice dust effects. So if we look at the uh, Meteoric Burst, that's another one. This is a bow. That effect is also dust. Kind of like a Meteor uh, Burst. Then we have the Emerald Scepter right here. This is also dust. Right, very clean effect. Then we have the Sapphire Caduceus. That's also all dust, if you can see. Then there's the Ruby Pike. Also all dust, trident all dust, and then the weeper, which has a very, very nice effect in my opinion. It's got like this uh, sine rotation uh, and also scale of the particles that just kind of gives it like this uh, curling effect. And that's what I mean by like you can get really creative and make things that look really, really cool. This is one of the coolest looking weapons, I think, you know, in the mod, in my opinion. And then, of course, you can't forget about the Death Eater staff. This is probably one of the coolest weapons. You literally turn into uh, a cloud of smoke. And you can imagine this is all particles, all sprite work. That's all this really is. 
But yeah, that's about it for this video. And that is kind of like the power of dust. If you know how to use it well, you can make some really, really awesome looking stuff. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys do not know, I am also a game developer and I'm currently trying to... And I'm currently in the process of developing my game called Earthward. And I want to make an animated trailer for that. And I'm trying to raise some, uh, some money to pay some animators to help me work on that. So if anyone here is interested, you can check out my main channel with a link in the description and get more information on that. Or support me over on Patreon for more videos like these. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.